looking for where the device was dropped, correct? And it, it does not stay attached to the fawns. It remains in the birth site, correct? Yep. And what do you call the device? Vaginal implant transmitter. VIT, vaginal implant transmitter, okay. That's really interesting. So that, that piece was uh, inserted how long ago? Uh, about four and a half months ago. At any point in time when, when a fawn comes out, this, this piece automatically comes out with it? Yeah, it, uh, it will be pushed out. This is pretty typical birth site in a field. What they'll do, they kind of mash this area out and uh, actually after she gives birth, she'll eat all of the afterbirth that's in the area. Well, this is, that's, that's really interesting. Like I said, it's not exactly what I was expecting for a place that one or maybe even two fawns were just born here within a couple hours ago. So we'll take this with us then? Yes, we will take this with us. We'll take a GPS point and we'll start looking for these fawns. Now, uh, usually when they're, they've been born, um, and I guess just recently, they won't be more than uh, 30 meters typically from the birth site, mm -hmm. uh, especially in something that's kind of thick like this because they're kind of wobbly and hard to hard for them to move around. So we need to kind of gather, uh, spread out a little bit and be very cautious and just mm -hmm. look. I mean, they can really hide well. Oh, yeah. Think, so. so we'll kind of spread out. Uh, the last time that Casey listened to the female, she was in this direction. Uh, generally, it's nice to start searching in the direction of the mother. Um, so I think we'll start walking this way and spread out and we hopefully we'll find them. Right here. You got one right here? Yep, here's one right here. So see how it's just laying still, it's not moving. I mean, you could walk right past this and never even know it was there. We're gonna capture this fawn. You and I will take it away from this area so we try not to influence, you know, exactly where it's it's hiding uh, as much as we can uh, while these other guys are searching for the other fawn. You see these newborns, even when you, you're touching them, most of the time they don't even move. That's how ingrained that those behaviors are in their body. Make sure you guys get a GPS point of this. So we'll take it over here, kind of away from everything else. When do y'all uh, mark that spot? Well, let me ask you, so uh, are those gloves to try to keep your scent off the fawn? Is that the whole idea? Yeah, the whole idea of this is we're trying to be as scent free as possible or leave as little scent as possible. Nice. Well, look at there. We found a second one. Once you guys start, we'll put the bag in the middle and you guys start working that one up over there. The first thing I always like to do is go ahead and put a collar on it. And this is an expandable neonate collar that we showed you. It's got um, all these, all the stitching in the rubber band. So as this animal grows, this collar grows with it until about nine months and then it'll drop off. So the animal won't be uh, you know, choked or anything the whole time. So what do you hope to see now through this data? We'll continue to monitor this animal and all the other ones that we've caught this summer uh, three times a day uh, until they reach about eight weeks old, at which time they're weaned and are kind of capable of living on their own. The ear tag is 196. Yep. All right, we'll sex it. And it looks like we've got a female. So a little female. Uh, right, female, yep. And then we'll continue to monitor them until their collars fall off or through the start of the hunting season. Uh, and what we get from this is kind of an estimate of first how many are living to different time periods. And then we get an estimate of recruitment, so how many animals are being added to the population each year. And we'll also have an understanding of how many animals are dying and at the rates they're dying and from what cause. So how many die from coyotes or hay cutters? 28 and a quarter. Now just pick her up right. and just kind of keep her held away from your body and we're gonna set her into this bag. Look at those long legs, built to run. Long John, legs. Huh? <laughs> and you just hook her up and tell me how much she weighs. The end game is hopefully we can make more opportunities for the animals and more opportunities for Kentucky sportsmen yep. by making sure that we that they have the best chance for survival. Yep, that's uh, the whole aspect or the whole idea behind this project is we want to know what's going on down here so we can better manage these populations for the benefit of the sportsmen and women of Kentucky. 7.91 pounds. Well, I really appreciate you letting me go out and, and uh, experience this with you today. It's the first time I've ever had a, a fawn in my hands. I've seen right. a bunch of them before. And that reminds me, we want everyone to know, please do not pick up the fawns and don't worry about those fawns that you see, they're, they're not abandoned. Mother's just keeping her safe distance. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yep. Is it right here? I believe that's it. Right here? Yep. Just lay them down, lay her down and pull her blindfold off. We'll keep checking on her for the next few months and see what happens. Good luck, little girl. I hope you grow up to be a big mama someday. Mm -hmm.